everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown for another hangout. I think it's 34 or have I forgotten? Let me see who's here because there is a big crowd here today. It's just awesome. I just love it when there's a big crowd. Um, but all the all people I know, Lisa S, Martin. Uh, let's see who else is here. Hold on a second. I'm trying to run my thing down here. Uh, and we've got Aaron here and Benny's here and Gretchen's here. Although Gretchen feel better. Uh, <laughs> and um, the other, Lisa number two, <laughs> Lisa S and Lisa N. Um, and Ca Carolina is here. And I'm sure we'll have others coming in as well. I'm so glad you all came here today. Um, I've been under weather myself, but not like you, Gretchen, at the moment. Just I woke up with like, I don't know, weird, horrible headache. And it's like, I think it's like migraine because it's like, on this side of the head so anyway but i'm here anyway and you all cheer me up oh and k rob ah one more <laughs> um but it's true sometimes i come to do the show and i'm like tired i don't feel well but as soon as i get here and i see you guys actually i feel a lot better so i'm feeling better already it's cool okay so today um just to mention if you'd like to participate in these hangouts live like the folks that are here now please go below click on patreon and join patreon and support this very demonetized channel um and demonized i think too but <laughs> um and uh yeah join join patreon and you can be part of the live group which is always a wonderful group of people uh which is why i like my pa my patrons from patreon being in the chat room because they're really nice folks and smart too so anyway okay so that's my speech um now to I, I have a whole bunch of things to do but I have to start with this Sherry Papini <laughs> you know um I did a did a recent vi video I did two videos so if you haven't seen them yet see my Sherry Papini Papini video before she was arrested um where I said I believe she it's a big fat hoax and here's all the reasons why and then she was arrested so who you know thank god I was right and, and then I did one after she was arrested and um, so you might want to look at that because I explain a lot of her behaviors and the reasons that it was very clear to me that this was no kidnapping so but here's today's or yesterday's news oh oh thank you okay wait a minute what okay wait a minute Pat, you look, this is what Lisa says. Okay, I forgot to ask this question. Pat, you look great. Color is really good. Are you using a green screen? No, this is my house. So I use my, I use the green screen on Sunday and also for call-ins. I have, uh, for Sunday, I, I, I do all the different cases. So I like to have different pictures from the cases and I put them on the green screen behind me. And for sun, uh, for the call-ins, the new call-in, with Benny, you better be calling in next time because it will be, a time that you will be awake in Denmark um, uh, I use a picture of my living room on a green screen uh, so it's great because it's never messed up <laughs> it's from when I when we built the house and I first put all the furniture in and before any clutter came in before I homeschooled my granddaughter and she made me buy a toad and a lizard and mice and so it's like this beautiful perfect living room which I wish was looking like that right now but I put it behind me and then I can pretend it's that way um, but no this is this is actually my wall this is just my bookshelf behind me I'm in I'm in the dining room I'm at the end of a dining room table yeah that's where I'm at so but I'm glad you uh but you say this I think the screen distorts I, I don't think so I think uh, because it's not a screen this is just the house uh, the color and clarity bit no I'll tell you what happens here Lisa um, I have three I have three lights and every time I do this something doesn't work and I have all these these things you know you go on here and you I'll even show you just so you can get an idea what I deal with here so I can drive you nuts see see this picture this is a picture of one of the lights so I've got two different lights that I have a basic light in the middle and I have two different lights and then then you get to move these things around so you're more yellow more red more this more that and then on top of that you have the camera thing and so somewhere along the way it all goes to hell <laughs> no, no matter what you do <laughs> so sometimes I'm too pink sometimes I'm too pale sometimes whatever but but there is no but there is no Lisa there's no there's no green screen this is this is my house watch can't do this with a green screen <laughs> oh wait a minute let me, let me put my name 
<laughs> not a green screen. Um, you know, I just, I only do as best I can because after that I lose my mind and I don't care anymore. So there we go. All right. So, so every week it's different, you know, different. Okay. I'm going to go to Sherry Papini. So anyway, Sherry Papini. Now she has confessed. Oh my goodness. She has confessed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure she has. You know why she's confessed? Because they have so much evidence against her now. There's, she can't get out of it. You know, so now she said this. This is from her lawyer. Sherry Papini will, Sherry Papini will plead guilty. Admit kidnapping was a hoax. And like, I love, love this. I am deeply ashamed of myself. No, you're not. Because you are, as far as I'm concerned, you represent psychopathy. Uh, your behavior is psychopathic. Psychopaths don't feel guilt or shame. You're just pissed off that they finally figured you out. So, yeah. So now she's confessing it was a hoax all along. Mm-hmm. All right. So if you don't know who Sherry Papini is, look at my other two videos. But anyway, she claimed she was kidnapped five years ago while she was jogging. She was this, you know, mother, uh, wife. She had two kids. And, oh, she's 39 years old. And... She's, you know, running and some two Hispanic women in masks, you know, jump out and kidnap her. It was a stupid story to begin with. So anyway, she has now been, she was arrested on March 3rd. Finally, after five years of people going, oh, I don't think it's a fraud. I'm pretty sure. Don't don't accuse women of ever just lying about things like this. No, women lie about things like this. You know, don't, don't fall for that crap. Uh, so anyway, she's going to plead guilty to counts of lying to federal officer to a federal officer and mail fraud. I don't know where a false police report doesn't come in here. I don't know where hate crime doesn't come in because she claimed two Hispanic women did this to her, you know, so, and she had this thing against Hispanic women. So she's like, like kind of screwed the Hispanic community over. So anyway, let's hear what she has to say. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, K. Rob says, at least, at least she finally admitted it. Unlike Jossie Smollett, Smollett, Smollett. Uh, don't buy that one either. She's admitting it because she thinks she's going to get a good deal. That's why. She's not admitting it because she has any remorse or any guilt or anything. Don't buy that. She's psychopathic in my opinion. So I don't, th that's not true. See, what happens is psychopaths will do whatever psychopaths do. And when they get caught, they have to decide what's the best game to play. This is the best game she's found to play. And let me tell you what it is. Because she's a female. And what happens is when men try to say they feel ashamed, nobody gives a crap. When women say they feel ashamed, they go, oh, she must have emotional problems. As if, because she's weak and wimpy and she's just, oh, you know, she's emotional. So therefore, maybe she, you no, know, she's just got psych psychiatric problems, you know. Okay, this is the game they play. All right, she says, quotes, I am deeply ashamed of myself for my behavior. You know, her behavior has been going on for decades. She has screwed her family over. She's lied over and over and over again. Apparently, she never felt that guilty. I am deeply ashamed of myself for my behavior and so sorry for the pain I've caused. Yeah, no, you're not. Again, you're sorry for yourself. The pain I've caused my family, my friends, all the good people. I feel, I feel, do I sound like Glenda the Good Witch? <laughs> All the good people who needlessly suffered because of my story. And those who worked so hard to try to help me. I, 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 okay. I will, <laughs> then she says, oh my God. <laughs> I will work the rest of my life to make amends for what I have done. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's hard not to laugh at this because I know it's all bull. You know, I know it's all bull. Now. I'm going to make amends. I feel so bad. No, you don't. No, you don't. And no, you're not. She's not going to make any amends to anybody. As soon as she gets off, as well as she can get off, she's going to go back to her old tricks. Now, here's the question I have for you. All right. Uh, you asked, didn't she break into her sister's house? I, there, she did a whole bunch of stuff, and I, I start forgetting what she did and what she didn't do. I know she accused her parents of abusing her and stuff like that. She did a whole bunch of crap. So anyway, here's the two questions. One, will she get a slap on the wrist? 
and, and, and this is a concern to me because I've seen this over and over again. I saw it with Jennifer Wilbanks, a runaway bride. In other words, if a guy did what Jennifer Wilbanks did, he would get a bigger sentence. But because it's a female, she got a teddy bear. I mean, she got a teddy bear in like little community service and like, you know, I guess she just had problems. No, the woman's a psychopath. She lied, she, used, she wasted police manpower, she's terrified the community, she screwed over everybody. That's not a nice human being. Don't give her a break. Give her, hand it to her. Um, so this woman, Sherry, Sherry, Sherry Papini, now she did, I mean, so much damage is ridiculous. First of all, obviously she hurt her family um, because her children thought their mother had been kidnapped and maybe dead. What kind of woman does that to her children? Uh, and she also did that to her husband, but you know, I'm, okay, I'm gonna talk about the husband in a minute. She t said that his, the two Hispanic women kidnapped her, so she messed with the Hispanic community. Uh, she terrified the entire community. She wasted a huge amount of manpower hours. Uh, a lot of money was spent on this woman. Then she took money from people and from funds and all that. This woman ought to go to prison for five to 10 years for major fraud and all the other things she did. I'm gonna guess she might get like six months in time served. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. And that makes me throw up because this woman is, people call, I would call it evil in the sense of psychopaths are evil in the, what they do. Um, but I'm gonna get, guess, she's gonna get a little slap on the wrist and she's gonna get some help from the mental health institutions, which will no, do nothing for her because she's psychopathic. So they're not gonna fix her. She's just gonna play another Sherry Papini game. Okay, now, the second thing about this is, let me see, um, so you're gonna go with a slap on the wrist, Carolina? I, th I think this is gonna be it. Uh, let's see what K. Rob says. I don't know what sentence the feds will give her, but I know there is no early parole in the federal system, so she will serve what she gets to my understanding. I think state charges will come next. Hmm, I hope so, but every time it comes down to a woman doing something like this, very little happens and it really upsets me because it's it's not fair and and it gives it gives other women the go ahead to do these kind of things other psychopathic females and also it degrades victims and 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 makes makes it so that other victims aren't believed in it that really angers angers me okay now second question here guys this is a question for you guys do you think keith is going to stay with his wife or do you think he's going to dump her what do you think <laughs> Do you think Keith Papini will forgive his wife for lying to him, making their children and him think she, he, she's kidnapped and dead, uh, making, making them think she suffered horrendously when really she was out shagging her ex-boyfriend? What do you think? Do you think, do you think Keith is going to forgive her? What do you think? Oh, Lisa, Lisa Ann says stay with her. Um, Let's see, k Rob says stay. If he stayed this long, why not? LOL, yep. Betty says he'll stay. <laughs> Gretchen says, we any sense he'd dump her. He obviously doesn't have any sense. Okay, I, I, I tend to agree with all those who say he'll probably stay. Uh, what I've explained before is that usually when you have a woman who exhibits Munchausen's, which is what she is, um, Munchausen's is a behavior, not a psychiatric condition. Munchausen's is, simply means that you're a psychopath who harms yourself to get attention. Okay, Munchausen syndrome by proxy is a psychopath who harms others, usually children or, or like patients in their care for attention, sometimes killing them. I always say that almost always the Munchausen woman has a, the man who's married to her is a dolt, D-O-L-T, dolt. In other words, as long as he gets sex and food, he's good. <laughs> and he overlooks everything else. In other words, she's, you know, she was a fairly, I mean, Sherry Papini is a fairly pretty woman. Um, and she wants you to know because every photo she takes, she's looking at you saying, aren't I beautiful? Aren't I cute? Aren't I beautiful? Just go, you know, um, he, might be, he, he might have his back to the camera, but she's like looking over his shoulder. <laughs> she loves the camera. Um, he may have thought I've got this gorgeous woman and she's really a good person and she's really she does she's so kind to me and a lot of times Munchausen syndrome ladies are actually 
they do cater to some extent to their husbands because they want them to stay and they want them to be their ally. Um, I would not be surprised if Keith forgives her. Her whole family is already forgiving her, saying, oh, you know, we, we, we're behind her. I'm like, hey, if, if Sherry Papini was my sister, she'd be my ex-sister. I don't have any time for that crap. She'd be out of my life. I, I have no problem with chucking a person out of my family for being a psychopath. I don't want you near me. I don't want you near my kids. I don't want you to have anything to do with you. You know, I will toss you out. Um, but this family is already going, even though she's done crap to them, they're already going, oh, we're behind you, Sherry. Oh, Lord. Mm, that's why Sherry got away with all the things she did. So if the family's behind her, I'm going to bet Keith comes right through and says, yeah, she know my wife. She had problems. You know, she's probably going to say things like, you know, I was so stressed out about life, you know. I, you know the, uh, suddenly, as a homemaker, the kids were around me, and I did, just didn't know how to talk about it with you, so I just had to run away, and I, I couldn't think about anybody who would help me. And then I thought about my ex-boyfriend. I wasn't going to be with him, but, you know, he's just a friend, and I thought he would help me, and, oh, Keith, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised it'll go like that. Uh, oh, Carolina says, I think he'll dump her. All right. Well, I will, I'm not going to take a bet only because I'm cheap and don't want to lose. <laughs> but I'll be curious to see how, how good it is. We're going to, we'll come out. Um, Ann says he will forgive but regret it. He might, but he's so, I think he's so into it. You know, you get, you get sucked into the whole drama that sometimes it's okay. I like this one. Uh, Lisa S. says, if she writes a book and makes dollars, he'll stay. <laughs> if not, he'll go bye-bye. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Netflix does the Sherry Papini story. And they'll pay her to, to be on the show. Or she'll just get attention. Uh, and then she will get that stupid book. Why I did it, you know, not if I did it, <laughs> like some others, but why I did it. And then she'll reach out to all the other women who suffer from emotional trauma. And the women, and she'll write it, and she'll get a co she'll get a, like a ghostwriter, and they'll write it so that it'll be really good about psychology. And everybody will go, oh, you know. And she helped me, so, Sherry Papini's story helped me so much because I true had, too had problems with these feelings of, oh, well, you know, self-esteem and all this stuff and feeling trapped. And Sherry, she was willing to share her story with us. Oh. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Hi, Florence. Florence is here. Um, how unattractive. A man who's attracted to a lie and vice versa. Well, you know, I guess there's somebody for everyone, as they say. <clears throat> uh, she is good at getting men to do her bidding. I don't think I could get an ex-boyfriend to hide out and brand me. <laughs> well, okay, Rob, you got to work on your skills, you know. That skill set is very useful. <laughs> um, this is actually... And Gretchen says, did she read Gone Girl before hatching her plan? Um, actually, that California case, which they call the Gone Girl case, which turned out to be that actually they were, the woman was really kidnapped, and I forgot the name of it, but it's a fascinating case. Um, that was called the Gone Girl case. And But yes, people wondered, you know, was this also part of her thing? Um, <laughs> well, Lisa says, when I'm stressed, I go shopping or get a haircut. She fakes an abduction. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, some people just have to do it in a bigger way. <laughs> I just eat, you know, eat food or something. Really unfortunate. Uh, um, uh, Lisa S. has a good point about the book. It'll guarantee him more sex and food. <laughs> it would. You know, and it also, also, you see, if you do these things right, you see how the media helps you because the media doesn't care about the truth. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, so... If, the, if they come in to do a book and she's going to talk about how wonderful her husband was through everything, how he didn't deserve what happened. Um, and now he's like, oh, I look good now because right now I'm going to say, Keith, you're an adult and you support a liar and you should dump her in a heartbeat, tell your children they don't need to be around this kind of mother and walk away with the children. And if you stay, you're just, you, you know, really? Okay, you don't deserve. I don't. You don't deserve my sympathy, and I and I personally don't think much of you. But I'm, if the book comes out, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be, you know, lauded as a wonderful husband through all of everything. You know, um, 
<laughs> Why couldn't she just drink too much when stressed like normal people? Because it doesn't get enough attention. You know, it doesn't. You got to do more and more and more. That's what Munchausen's is. It's, you're a psychopath and, you know, you keep having to, it's a narcissistic thing. You get need to get more and more and more attention. And you do one thing and then it's just, you know, you get a little bit, but it's not enough. So you do something a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. Man, when she got kidnapped and and then thrown out on the highway and brutalized and branded. There were a lot of people who felt lots of sympathy for her. Oh my God, the poor woman, you know. So it worked, it really did, it, wor it worked. So anyway, that's enough for Sherry Papini for today. Uh, so the other the other person of, um, of female uh, I wanna mention right here is uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. They're, the Johnny Depp trial is going on and uh, <laughs> Some of it's kind of funny because Johnny Depp, um, he basically texted people and said that he called Amber Heard scum and um, <laughs> apparently he didn't, he wasn't too happy about her. Um, and then, what was the other comment here? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, oh, come on, don't, don't do that to me. Ah, ah. You know, you know what I really hate? If, if, you, if you have um, something open, uh, and it says one thing on the headline, and then when you click on it, the headline changes. I don't know why they do that, but it really annoys the hell out of me. Because there was a great comment, and now, now I, nah. And now I can't find it because they changed the headline when I clicked on, oh, here it is. I found the headline again, before you click on it. Johnny Depp trial. Amber Heard accuses actor of sex assault as he calls his ex-wife a compulsive liar. Now, I don't know how many of you follow uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I'm not a big Hollywood person, so I most of them give a crap. Um, but they're, they're in this trial where they're each accusing each other of abuse and all kinds of horrible things. Apparently he said that he wouldn't mind if she were decomposing in a trunk of a car, um, which is pretty mean, but uh, I'm just gonna say this. And some of you have know this already, and some of you have never heard this, but this is my whole thing about the case. I spent 30 to 60 minutes in a green room, green room with Amber Heard in New York City before a television show, uh, way before she met Johnny Depp, or just before she met Johnny Depp. Uh, she was there with her manager, or whoever the heck she had in there with her. And I spent 30 to 60 miserable minutes listening to that woman, and I said to myself, this woman is a narcissist, and she is a social climber, and she is a manipulator, and whoever she sinks her little claws into, God help him. And that would be you, Johnny Depp. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say about it. Just because it makes me, see, I'm like, Ugh. Okay, so that's that. Now, I just wanna, I wanna point out this one. This is, this is a bizarre case. I just, just have to, it's just like, what? Anyway. A Florida babysitter. What now? Don't do that to me. Oh, see, now they did it to me again. Hold on one second. They ch they, things change up. Florida babysitter arrested after spinning a child in a dryer. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so so this girl... This is, this girl, she looks like a she looks like a normal girl. You hired for a babysitter, yeah. Mm -hmm, nice kid, nice woman. A uh, woman was arrested after she allegedly, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it happened, put a four year old child she was babysitting into a dryer and turned it on. Yeah, she put some towels with him, so I mean, she, <laughs> she wanted to you know make sure he drive faster. I guess um, the child was later brought to a local hospital where he told adults she had put him in the machine and he went round and round. He also told his parents he was in a lot of pain afterwards. Medical staff noted the boy had bruises on his back, his ears, and his face. She was arrested and charged with aggravated child abuse. I'm still trying to figure out how you put the four-year-old in the dryer. You know, that's just... <laughs> I mean, when you talk about crimes that people commit against children, which is hor horrific in any way, shape, or form, but sometimes they go to these extremes instead of just like punching the kid out or, you know, slapping him or shoving him. Yeah, putting him in the dryer, that's pretty extreme. Um, so, I, I, you know, 
I hope she gets a, a you know, I, I, you know, this is what bothers me too. They consider this aggravated child abuse. I consider this, consider this attempted murder. I don't understand these modified crimes that don't seem so bad. It's attempted murder. You put a child in a dryer, it's attempted murder. You know, that's my opinion. Um, well, Martin has a comment about maybe Amber could play the part. <laughs> Uh, maybe Amber could play the part of Sherry Papini in the Netflix dramatization. She probably could do that quite well. You know, she wouldn't even have to act. Uh, <laughs> that's great. How old is the babysitter? Okay, the babysitter is 35 years old. So she's not a youngster. You know, um, <laughs> I hope she gets fired. Well, I hope she gets fried. But, you know, that would... You just got to change those letters around. Fired, fried. Okay. Um... Unbelievable. Uh, well, that's interesting. I've never heard of this. Okay, so K. Rob says, if you want to see the real Amber Heard, watch the movie All the Boys Love Bandy Lane. I think she has a lot in common with her character in the movie. Interesting. I've never heard of that movie. I might have to check that out, although, I mean, Amber Heard is a very pretty girl. But so what? Lots of pretty girls in Hollywood, you know. Johnny, you could have not not hooked up with her, you know. I, I hope she gets, I guess, hope she gets way long. She, you know, she's, in my opinion, again, I think it's attempted murder, and I don't think she should just get aggravated child abuse. Aggravated child abuse is slapping the kid in the face, maybe punching him. It's not putting a kid in a dryer. That's, that's attempted murder. And I don't understand the low level of things that they, they, they put there. Hmm. That kind of bugs me. Okay. That was just, these are just a couple off things I just saw before I started the show, and I'm like, oh, these are interesting. Um, that's it. And Oh, and the other one I think is really kind of funny is um, the, this goes to show you what kind of, uh, you know, citizens we have. So in Seattle, apparently, they have, uh, let's see where I'm going to find this. Um, hold on a sec. Where did where it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, it's going to go missing. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Well, anyway, Seattle, 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 Washington in the U.S. decided that they were not going to have people have to get fare cards and go through machines to get on the, you know, on, on the tra transport system there. Um, and they were going to do an honor system. <laughs> Turned out 70% of the people <laughs> didn't honor the honor system, <laughs> which is kind of frightening when you think about it. It's like 70%. You know, I'm, I'm thinking when they started this, they're like, oh, our citizens are such good people. I'm sure it'd just be like 5% that kind of skip or, skip over this stuff. 70%. You know, <clears throat> that's why sometimes you have to have a criminal justice system that takes crimes seriously, even when you're cheating by getting on, you know, getting on the, uh, on the, um, the uh, train or the subway or whatever. When I lived in Denmark, hey Ben. <laughs> okay, Benny can Benny can talk about this. So you know this. Okay, so Benny, tell me about this. So I lived in Denmark for six months, and I took I took the train in and out. And what they had there was a system where you could get a card for the month, and they didn't have any turnstiles or anything you had to go through. So what happened is you went on, you got just got on the train and went. Again, sort of an honor system. Well, every once in a while, a conductor or whatever you want to call the, these guys or somebody who checks the passes would jump onto the train. And you were, then he walked down the aisles and you're supposed to show your pass. And when the guy jumped on the train, a whole bunch of people would jump off the train on the other end. <laughs> and, and then there were some who got caught and they pretended. They pretend they're deaf or some pretended they had just... Your mental problems couldn't understand. So, Benny, what, what do you what do you remember of that? Do you, I mean, this was the 1970s when I was in, in Denmark, uh, in Copenhagen. Um, I'm just curious whether uh, <laughs> whether you remember that and how well it worked. I mean, it might have worked better in, in Denmark, and at least they had guys jumping on the train, and people had to show them that, or they got a, a fairly, I thought, a hefty fine, but uh, I'm not actually sure. Uh, but... Uh, it was kind of, I remember, I remember those days, but apparently in Seattle, Washington, 70% ain't paying their fare and they don't care. So I just thought that was a kind of interesting thing. Now, I have to go to what, what uh, Martin said earlier. Oh, yep. Wait, wait. Yep, that's how it is in Denmark. Okay, so Denmark, is it 70% people don't pay? I don't think so. I thought most people that I saw 
did indeed get their cards and do the right thing. There was a, a small percentage that leaped off the trains. I mean, what do you think the percentage was of people who decided not to pay the fines and to try to escape the penalties? <laughs> I'm just curious what, what you come up with on that. Um, but I say it was many, many, unfortunately, many years ago. Um, I wanted to point out here, let me go back up here to what Martin said, just so I can get demonetized. Wait a minute. Gosh, my glasses are fogging up. I can't see anything. No, oh, that's weird. Um, oh, yes. Um, Martin said, today we'll learn how to plan a homicide properly. <laughs> and Lisa says in return, ah, great, like how to get away with murder. So, yeah, so this, there's this case which I came across and it just, it just, I was like, oh my God, I hadn't heard about it. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Benny says, still, just did the same in Copenhagen this summer. We paid, but we were never checked. Most of the time they didn't check. So you could really, you could ride the trains for like, you know, for, for a long time before somebody finally showed up and got on the, on, on the car. So I know a lot of people, that's when they just left and jumped off, you know, at the, as soon as they could get to that station, they'll leap. You saw these people leaping off. Um, Gretchen says, uh, I used to live in Germany. It was a similar system. You could buy cars or single tickets. That's true. Uh, same in Denmark. And if you were caught, you had to pay a fine. But the fine was so low, people were willing to risk it. You know, it's sad. It's sad but true that, you know, people, you know, have trouble being honorable. And it's a real shame because, I mean, I did buy my, I had my pass. I, I, I wouldn't have ever felt comfortable not doing the right thing and not following the law but some others yeah okay so here's a story that i thought was just so interesting let me find it let me find it okay wait a minute where did i put it okay right here her name is N nancy brophy okay so she's a crime novelist whom i have never heard of uh and she wrote uh she wrote actually an essay called how to murder your husband <laughs> So my theory is, if you're going to murder your husband, don't write an essay called How to Murder Your Husband. Okay, just not a bright idea. So anyway, she turned out romantic fiction. And um, it says here, she, granted, she never set the literary world alight. Wait a minute, I'm going to have, wait a minute. Nancy Brophy, I'm just going to look this up for a second here. I just want to see whether she sold any books or these are all self-pubbed. Because they said she didn't like, so maybe she was a crappy author. And that, you know, Nancy Brophy, I've never heard of her. Nancy Brophy. Well, that's interesting. What happened? Oh, I put Bancy Brophy. That's not going to help out. Nancy Brophy. <laughs> there we go. Books. All right. Oh, she did pretty. Oh, no, that's Catherine Jones. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh, she did do. Oh, she. <laughs> I'm looking them up now. Um. She wrote things like The Wrong Brother, and then in parentheses, Wrong Never Felt So Right. And then she's got this, The Hot Dude. <laughs> okay. She's got 19, she's got 19 uh, reviews. So that's not a, that's not a very well, uh, uh, that's not a book that sold well. The Wrong Cop. Still, Wrong Never Felt So Right. What's up with this Wrong Never Felt So Right? Oh, and The Wrong Husband. Wrong Never Felt So Right. <laughs> All her books are wrong, never felt so right. Apparently, she's got a thing with wrong being okay. Um, let me see who published these. Um, I'm going to look at the oh, the wrong hero. Oh, she did do a whole bunch of crappy stuff. The wrong seal. Hmm, okay. She did a bunch of crappy stuff. Okay, let me look up the, the wrong lover, the wrong husband. I'm going to look up the wrong husband and see. It only costs $3.99 on Kindle. Uh... This woman's desperate. Okay. Ah, the publisher is Nancy Brophy. So she's self-published on Amazon. Now, mind you, I also, I have uh, a bunch of books that were published by authors. I, I mean, sorry, by publishers. Like, I think I have five or six publishers now, different ones. But I also have self-published, and I'm so fed up with publishers. Unless they offer me a huge advance, I'm going to self-publish from now on. Um, so I can't totally down her for that, but um, she, apparently she wrote kind of crappy books. Anyway. <laughs> so let's this is what happened with her which is just unbelievable so anyway one of the things i point out is that there that people who think they can commit a crime they often think it's easier than it turns out to be and since they actually don't know how to commit a crime even though they've researched it and all this stuff 
They do things that get them caught. So let's look, let's look what happened to her. All right. Here's what she advised. She said, well, she wrote in this, this one of these books, well, after all, if the murder is supposed to set me free, I don't want to spend time in jail. <laughs> okay. Uh, she advised against bumping off characters with knives because there'd be blood everywhere. Poison, she added, would take too long and a hitman could blackmail. As for guns, she wrote, they're loud, messy, require some skill, and it takes 10 shots for the sucker to die, either of terrible aim or he's on drugs. <laughs> well, okay, so anyway, she wrote this title, essay called How to Murder Your Husband. Seven years later, her husband of 21 years was murdered. He was shot twice with both bullets piercing his heart. So anyway, she went on trial, accused of killing 63-year-old Daniel Brophy, her husband. And they looked happy once. But anyway, um, so let's see what happened. The, the, of course, her, her, her defense attorney says she had no reason to kill her husband. She loved him so much. All right. So what actually happened? So now let me find it. Let me find the evidence, which is really quite amusing. Um, what she actually did. So, okay. It, was, it shocked his colleagues when, and his students when they discovered Daniel's body when they arrived at the Institute. He, I guess he was a, a professor, what was he? Um, he was, oh, he, he was a chef at the Oregon Culinary Institute. Okay, they found his body there. He had been alone in the kitchen, standing at the sink, prepping for his upcoming Saturday morning classes when he was shot in the chest and back. Either shot could have been fatal. There was no sign of a robbery or a struggle. So, and his, his car was still parked outside, but it couldn't come up with any good reason for him to be killed. Nancy quickly appeared at the murder scene, saying she had been called about the incident. So, I walked up and lifted the, oh, this is the, the president of the Culinary Institute, said, I walked up and lifted the tape for her, and she said, this doesn't sound good, Brian, and I said, it's not good. Okay, so then she announced on Facebook the next day that her husband had died. She said, my, my husband and best friend, Chef Dan Brophy, was killed yesterday morning. She was overwhelmed and struggling. Then she dressed in black to address the mourners, telling them how Dan had loved teaching and her family. However, <laughs> here's the however, the, the searching Daniel's phone, detectives discovered a bookmark article on iTunes, and the county shared with Nancy called 10 Ways to Cover Up a Murder. <laughs> Maybe you just don't want to look at that. And I've always pointed out that one of the problems with people, when they're going to commit a murder and they go on Google and Google stuff about the murder, like weapons or methodologies or you know, evidence, they're usually not at that moment planning to commit the murder. They're just you know, thinking about it. Then when they actually commit the murder, there's this trail of evidence because they didn't think, they didn't actually think they were going to do it at the time. So now she's got this here. All right. They also found out that Nancy had researched ghost guns, guns assembled by the purchaser from parts, which make them untraceable. She searched ghost guns online. Now, mind you, anybody could jump in here and say, look, the woman is an author and an author will look up all kinds of strange things to do her stories. So she wanted to write a story about a person committing a crime. He might want to cover up the murder. He might want to get a ghost gun. Because you're an author, you can claim this. Now, I hate to say this, but if you look at my search engine, there's a lot of squirrely things on there, let me tell you. I look up all kinds of weird things, including strange sexual perversions, because I've run into a case which had that, so I look it up um, at, because I, I need to know how often this happens and who does it and where do they do it at. But if somebody comes in and looks at my stuff, they go, dang, that Pat Brown's a pervert, wow. you know. <laughs> and so I look up a lot of strange things in my search engine. So I'm going to give her a break. Maybe she was just you know, preparing for her next book, okay, doing her research. All right. However, however, Prosecutor Sean Overstreet told the court that Nancy had bought a slide and barrel pistol on eBay. 
that would match the handgun she and Daniel had bought at a gun show but never used. This is fascinating. This is where she did plan this murder and she thought she could get away with it by doing this tricky thing, you see. He said she swapped its slide and barrel for the eBay parts before shooting her husband and then replaced the eBay parts with the original, thus being able to present a fully intact firearm to the police that would not be a match to shell casings that she left at the scene. So I'm going to give her credit on that one. That's, that's, she, did, she did think that one through, and that was kind of an interesting methodology. Okay, so you think maybe this woman could get away with this crap, except that you bought the damn gun on eBay, and that left a trace of where you got the gun. If you bought it someplace else, you know, on the street or something, you might have gotten away with it, but you bought it on eBay. All right, they say she deleted her eBay account days after the murder. All right, oh, but just, she, there's more here. Okay. Um, and her lawyers say she bought the gun for research purposes for a novel. See, again, you can put that out there. Nancy also reported and told the police she had been home after her husband left for work. But lead detective Anthony Merrill of the Portland Police Bureau told the court that camera footage had shown her minivan driving in two directions in the area on the morning of the murder. 6.39 a.m. it traveled toward the shooting <laughs> and at 7.28 it moved away from the shooting. You know, lady, there's, you know, if you've been studying your, your, you know, all the things about crimes, it's a thing called video surveillance that you can be caught on camera and you were. All right. So that, that was concerning. And then they arrested her and she said, you must think I murdered my husband. Yes, she did. So anybody who was in shock? Oh, yes, they're in shock. Okay. Um, prosecutors claimed that three days after Daniel died, Nancy called a local police detective asking for a letter claiming she wasn't a suspect. Who does that? As she was the beneficiary of a uh, 30,000 pound, this is, this is a daily mail in the UK, so we're doing, a, we're doing the UK money as opposed to US money, even though it was a US case. <clears throat> uh, and she wanted to assure the insurance company that she hadn't killed her husband. So can you, can you give me a letter of reference for the insurance company so I can get my money? <laughs> oh my God, that's just a thing. Um, Certainly, Nancy was aware. Oh, shoot. Don't do this. My, it just reloaded. Okay. Hold on a second. Just reloaded. There's one more funny thing in here. Um, where was it? Oh. Um, certain. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Cert certainly, Nancy was aware of the financial motives for murdering a spouse, having written a blog about that very subject in context of her fiction in 2011. Divorce is expensive. And do you really want to split your possessions? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or if you're married for money, aren't you entitled to all of it? The drawback is the police aren't stupid. They're looking at you first. So you have to be organized, ruthless, and very clever. I'd say she's organized and ruthless, but she wasn't so clever. She, uh, she really, really, really screwed up on that one. So anyway, um, yeah. So they say there's a circumstantial case, but uh, I can see what happened to her. Uh, this was, I'm not sure what happened to her actually. Let's see, when was this written? Oh, it was updated and it was published in April 2022. So I guess she hasn't gone to court over it. But, <laughs> the, so there you go, Benny. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Martin, you gotta be ruthless. You gotta do your research, but don't be stupid. <laughs> that's, that's the key here. <laughs> I'll show you my research history if you'll show me yours. <laughs> I think I don't think that's a fair. I think mine's probably like where where's this and yours is like this, and I'm not going to get my oh unless you want to tell me something, and you don't do research for crimes or for fiction. That would really be you. Mm, that's concerning. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a plot from Basic Instinct. I mean, maybe she watched one too many movies, but she wasn't obviously a very popular author, so she probably you know. I don't know where she got her ideas from, but boy, did that not work out for her. <laughs> but I thought, oh my God, you know, that's like, really? It's like, But it goes to show it is harder to do the crime than to imagine the crime because things go wrong that you don't anticipate in the crime. And uh, I pointed out with this other one, I, I said there's going to be two of them. Um, there's another woman, this is a UK crime. And this, this happened a long time ago, but it was a 20-year-old woman. She wrote detailed to-do list 
on plans to kidnap, torture, and kill a man with their murder, murder toolkit. So anyway, she's in prison for years now. But what was it? She was from Brighton. She was sentenced to 13 and a half years for pleading guilty to attempted murder. Now let's, let's, let, let's look what went wrong with this woman. So let's see. She's got this detailed list. Oh my God. I'm in the car. Turn off the phone. Drive to the place. Get keys if possible and lock the doors. Bring knife and duct tape. Put protective gear on. Post notes and questions. Change your Snapchat password. Delete WhatsApp and text messages. And then turn off the phone and track my, I and track my iPhone. Be sure that's off. Okay, drive to the grave site. Do your torture. Walk him to the site and kill and bury him with a bag. Um, wipe your hands and body suit with cloth. Change your shoe covers. And then there's a whole thing on cleaning process huh? and all the different kinds of fabrics you need to clean. So anyway, so what happened was she picked up her victim um, and on the way to his house, she insisted on taking a detour where she collected two shopping bags and later threatened the man with a knife. Well, here's where the girl went wrong. A struggle continued and, and the woman and her victim left the van, fought in the street where he threw the knife in a bush. Then he called 999 after she bit his finger down to the bone. Officers arrived on the scene. They arrested her. Her name, uh, last name is George. And upon searching her shopping bags, they found items like bleach, duct tape, lighters, gloves, and a Stanley knife, all linked to plans to kidnap and murder and cover up her crimes. A later search of her address uncovered n a number of notes in a to-do list featuring the plans of, yeah, drive him to the site and kill him. And, and she, she had like, this is, she had all this crap in her, this is her, 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 her kill kit right here. I mean, look at this. She's got pliers and gloves and all kinds of crap in here. I mean, <laughs> oh my God. Um, so she had this whole to-do list. It says, um, I'm in no doubt that George would have followed through with her hugely disturbing to-do list were it not for the victim overpowering her and the prompt response of her officers to bring her into custody. So here's what she didn't seem to figure out. You're fighting a guy with a knife. It's a stupid weapon for you to fight a guy with. Really? I mean, it didn't sound like the guy was a wimp. So you actually thought you'd take the knife out and somehow he would just obey you and you could stab him with it? <laughs> didn't work out well for her. She goes to prison. So um, just, just, I'm like, how stupid is that? You know? Uh, you know, again, she didn't think out the most important thing. In her case, it was the knife, you know, trying to fight a guy with a knife. She was just, that was way out of her league. And with the, with the, with the author lady, she didn't pay any attention to video surveillance. You make one mistake, you go down. So I thought that was the kind of, those two cases were just really like, really interesting. I, I thought they were, they were fascinating. Um, then there's a weird case. I want to bring this up because I, I'm kind of, I kind of don't know what I think yet on this case. And I'll let you kind of just, you know, tell me what you think might have happened. Um, this is a really horrific case and I, it's in Atlanta, Georgia in the U S and let me find it. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I can find the right one that I wanted to, because there's a couple of some really weird stuff. Um, so what happened was there's this woman, here she is, and here she is with her dog, okay? That's her, she, that's her and her dog. And this is what happened, and it's a really weird case. She, um, warm summer evening, Katie Jenness decided to take her dog, dog Bowie. Or I think it's Bowie or Bowie, because I live in Bowie. But we say Bowie, but, you know, Bowie knife. It's either Bowie or Bowie, B-O-W-I-E. I'm going to call him. Bowie, okay, it took her de decided to take her dog Bowie for a walk at Atlanta's famous Piedmont Park. Now, this is in the neighborhood, okay? Katie's girlfriend, Emma, was working down the street as a bartender. So Katie stopped by to say hello and let Emma see Bowie, okay? There were a few folks inside the bar sitting in his neighborhood restaurant, uh, and others were out biking and, and walking, jogging, walking their dogs. It was late, but... There were, I guess it was an area that there were enough people in that you felt sort of safe. So P Piedmont Park is like Central Park, 
So Central Park at night, I wouldn't go on myself. Uh, but there are lovers there, people, you know, doing all kinds of things. But it is late. So anyway, so she went to the park to walk the dog. Emma says she got off of work and rode her bike home and Katie wasn't there. Katie should have been back from walking Bowie by the time Emma got there. Emma called Katie's cell phone, but got no answer. Emma says she then sent several text messages and didn't get an answer from that either. So she used Find My iPhone and she located Katie's phone. It showed it the phone was about 100 yards inside the park and not moving. Emma thought maybe Katie dropped her phone. So she entered the park past the tall stone gate and almost immediately saw Bowie, the dog, lying in the middle of the cement path. As Emma poached Bowie, the dog, she could see he was dead. The dog had been stabbed to death. Which is just, this is just very interesting that, you know, somebody would stab to death the dog. Um, she continued down into the park toward the dot showing Katie's cell phone and about 100 feet from Bowie, Emma saw Katie lying on the ground. She rushed over to her, checked her pulse, clear she had been, she was dead. The attack had to start right after Katie entered the park. When, where Bowie was found suggests he was killed first. So the guy, whoever it was, killed the dog first. And then said Katie likely tried to run away. But the killer caught her about, after about 100 steps, caught up with her. She died of sharp force injuries to the face, the neck, and the torso. She had cuts and stab wounds to her hands, defense wounds, or she was trying to save her dog. I don't know which one because they don't mention she could have been, you know, when the guy's trying to stab her dog, she might have put her hands out for that and then ran. Because um, I have a feeling she would have tried to save her dog. I think she's just one of those people. Um, the autopsy report reveals that Katie was stabbed over 50 times, but it gets weirder. The killer also took the time to carve letters into Katie's torso, F-A-T. So the, obviously the word fat, um, which is a weird thing. Um, first of all, it's weird that any killer would carve anything into anybody. Uh, those are the things they call signatures whenever you have a, uh, you know, some kind of a, you know, criminal mind show. Uh, signatures are really rare carving anything into anybody is really rare so an fat fat the, she wasn't raped it doesn't appear so what they just wanted to put fat on her tummy i mean i don't you know it's very strange um and uh let's see then it says um they haven't found out who did it uh and some there's some people giving some really weird opinions here so that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, um, she was alive when he carved the F A. The, the killer carved F A T alive. So now Emma, Emma, okay, that is the uh, the girlfriend. They've been together for quite a while. Uh, told CSI Atlantis Karen Greer that she had nothing to do with Katie's murder. Greer points out that numerous folks on social media have pointed to Emma as a suspect. Greer asked Emma what she did with the GoFundMe money, and Emma says she paid some bills and bought a condo. Emma also says she did not give any money toward the reward fund. I know they're like, why didn't she give money to the reward fund? I ended up buying the condo, explained Emma. I moved there with Katie and it wasn't safe. Two shootings in two months, car break-ins. I don't even understand what she's talking about here. Um, Greer asked Emma what she wanted from the Atlanta police. I think this is a very bizarre statement here. Emma says she wants them to tell people she is not a suspect. I mean, I would think she'd want the police to find who killed her girlfriend. Not that she wants the police to tell everybody she's not a suspect. I mean, maybe that maybe second. Yes. First, I want you to find whoever killed Katie. And okay, can you, mom, uh, by the way, can you let people know that I wasn't the one who killed her? That would work out okay. Um, but to say she wants them to tell her that she's not a suspect. Now, I will have to say this, just to be fair to Emma, this is a news report and God knows how many news reports have misquoted me. So it could be she did say something else, but it's all been misquoted. But it is a weird, it, it is a weird statement. Um, so Clark told Greer she's been receiving death threats from people who think she's responsible for the murders. 
of the dog, her girlfriend and the dog. She even bought a gun for her own safety. Um, now it says, uh, yeah, so, so basically they, at this point, they haven't arrested anybody, but it is one strange crime. I mean, it really is a weird crime. Um, now, then he says, I think Emma, her partner was involved in the murder. Well, you know, the tendency is to say that women wouldn't commit this kind of horrific crime. But that's not true. Sometimes they do, especially one of the things people say is because there was no sex sexual assault and because she was stabbed so many times that it was like a, a, a huge rage crime. And the fact she carved F.A.T. into her stomach was almost like an, a huge insult to, to Katie. Um, but... I don't know that there's any evidence. I don't. I didn't see any proof that um, Emma couldn't. You know, like she had a total alibi. I don't know that she had an alibi. Um, just have no clue whether she could have gone in and committed this crime. Um, don't know. Uh, but so could she have done it? The answer to that is yes, she could have. And she, of course, there are people out there who think she did do this. And this is one of the problems with social media that. You know, when I talk about something, I'm talk, trying to keep it in an educational tone, not to say, oh my God, see, she did it. Let everybody go out and go out and, you know, call, put stuff on social media and say, Emma, you killed your partner. No, no, don't do that nonsense because you, you have no idea. We have no idea at this point. Um, uh, K. Rob says, I think it was somebody she knew, like her girlfriend or some other person close to her. You know, it, it has a tendency to look that way. Um, you know, stabbing the dog first was interesting, you know? Um, the dog could have been trying to protect her. Could be why it was killed and she was found further away. Yeah, I would I would assume that nobody went in there just to kill the dog. Um, that, that's unlikely. But, but let's play devil's advocate here. Um, it could be that somebody was walking in the park and a damn dog jumped on him or her and it pissed them off and... They're like crazy person and they started stabbing the dog because they're angry that this dog jumped on them or, or tried to bite them or whatever. And she comes up and tries to prevent the dog from being hurt and he ends up stabbing her and then he ch he's already, she's a witness now so he runs after her. But then you wonder, why would you car fat? <laughs> and I kept looking for another meaning for fat, you know, instead of like you're fat, um, like freaking awful, <laughs> turd. I mean, I couldn't come up with a, you know something like that. You know, something that meant anything for the fat word, like you know, stupid dog or something. You know, um, so that seems so pointed at her. I, I just can't see that somebody, a serial killer, for example, usually is not going to. No, first of all, not commit the sexual assault as well, but also then carve this in for no particularly good reason. These particular words. So it's it's really hard to. It's a very strange crime. Um, was, no, em, no, Emma was thin. Emma is thin, and I believe that uh, Katie, the girl, the girl who was killed, she looks a little bit more chunky than Emma. Emma seems to be very, th yeah, Emma seems to be kind of, um, kind of model looking, and, 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 uh, and Katie seems to be a little bit, uh, Emma's in the white, white shirt, and Katie, you can see, is a little fatter in the face and body. Um, but I, you know, is that, is that, is, is that a reason to, you know, is there really that much of a problem in between? Um, could the killer have carved fat to throw off investigators? I don't think so. You know, this is always in the movies. Uh, they you know, that's like, they're not thinking about the investigators at the time they're committing this kind of crime. They're doing something because they want to do it. Um, so they're not even concerned about that. Um, let's see what Lisa says here. Or premeditated. Killer knew she had a dog, to incapacitate the dog first and gives the killer time to stab her and carve fat into the victim. Possibly. Um, he could, you know, yeah. I mean, it could be, I'm going to go in there and, and eliminate the dog. I, she's, she's a dog walker and she's going down into the park. I'll eliminate the dog first and then I, then I won't have to, then I'll have her. Yeah. Uh, but 
to carve fat into her seems like that's more of an afterthought in my opinion usually when you come down to these kind of things it's not like they go in and say i'm going to carve fat into your body and usually it's something that happens where in the midst of all the adrenaline and all the things that are happening this idea comes into their mind to put it to her essentially um Plus, fat is a woman's insult, not a man to a woman, usually. Um, yeah, usually if it's a man, he's saying that it's P-H-A-T, <laughs> that kind of fat, um, not just your, your chunky in the middle. I, I, I can't see a serial killer coming and saying that. What would be the point? I mean, that, that doesn't really make sense. Um, so Katie is larger than Emma. Yes, yes. Um, so the killer could be a she. It could. And, and what's happened, I think, with Emma is I, 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 I'm gathering at this point she does not have an alibi. She is the one that found the body. She used the GoFundMe campaign apparently for her own, her own enjoyment, shall we say, uh, her own improving of her lifestyle and didn't, isn't using it for a reward fund, which is really odd. Um, and then she seems to be more concerned that the police eliminate her as a suspect than that they go find who killed uh, her partner. Um, so Emma, I'll say is this, I don't know how accurate this article is, but if it's accurate, Emma did not make herself look good. And that's why people sometimes look at certain people and think they did it. Uh, I always point this out to people. Um, when, when you have weird behavior, don't blame everybody else for it, you know? I mean, if you have weird behavior, hey, people are gonna look at you. If you do strange things, people are gonna look at you, you know? Uh, so you can't blame them for that. You can simply say, I, I can say, hey, look, I understand, you know, I did these things, maybe it does make me look suspicious, um, and I can't blame you. But, you know, so I don't know, it's a really, a really bizarre case. Uh, I'm curious to see how this turns out. This happened, this happened, uh, Oh, this has been since November, November 17th. They haven't, huh? Hmm. Uh, let me, let me just put, let me just put in, let me just put in her name and see whether I come up with uh, an update uh, and see whether they've arrested anybody for her. I just, this one just happened to pop up. Janice update. Okay, here we go. Update. Let's see. Okay, March 15th. What? Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, okay. Murder of woman in Piedmont Park last year, which is in 2021, says it's now a forensic investigation. They announced Tuesday that the murder of a woman in Piedmont Park last year has turned into a forensic investigation. All right. Um, surveillance images in the area show some of Janice's last moments alive as she walked into the park at 1 a.m. Um, the murders received national attention. They've not been able to identify a suspect or arrest anyone. Um, we are relying on the science and technology. Investigations take times, sometimes days, weeks, or years. Um, and that's all they're saying. So again, we don't know whether they have a suspect, they don't have a suspect, um, or they're hoping that some forensic evidence will eventually link uh, to somebody else. And uh, so what gets tricky here, um, let's, we're talking about a partner crime. If, if, if partner's involved in a crime, right? The problem is they might already have their DNA on that person because it's natural, right? You supposedly, you know, the dog was brought by so, so Emma could pat the dog on the head and all that stuff, so there you go. Um, and then she can give a hug, you know, bye Katie, see you later, see you at home. So your DNA is sort of there. So some things get tricky so you'd have to say well if, if a person stabs someone that many times there would be blood probably on them is there any evidence in the house where they lived that some bloody evidence was brought home on clothing or something else they uh, wh where's the knife you know that kind of thing uh so they'd be looking at that if they if they went to the house and everything is spick and span clean and there's just no way it's emma then they got to be looking at who else just for whatever reasons uh a jealous person, um, a crazy person, you know, because sometimes it's hard to discern that. So, you know, as a profiler, I stay away from doing that kind of nonsense because it's it's really hard to tell. I mean, it is. I could say the person showed a great deal of anger, 
But, you know, serial killers sometimes show a great deal of anger just for the sake of it. Um, it's, hard, it's, it's hard to say this person knew her or didn't know her. There's, I mean, it tends to look like this is a personal thing. But then again, you just don't know. So they gotta, they got to keep those avenues open in a proper investigation. So I thought that was a really fascinating one. And let me just, I think I'll just um, end tonight with this one thing. Um, uh, and I, I'm getting not political about this, but I just wanted to point this out because it's interesting when we have these situations where police shootings come down. Uh, and this is the Michigan shooting, which shows a police officer shooting uh, a man during a, a traffic stop. His name, the man who was killed was Patrick Loyola. I don't know how to pronounce it, L-Y-O-Y-A. And the dash cam shows a good portion of this incident. And I just looked at this and I'm like, I think it's a justifiable homicide. And I'll tell you what. So the police pull this guy over. And the cars pull, you know, here's here's the guy's car pulls over. The police car pulls behind it. And the guy in the, in the car who's pulled over, this Patrick guy, gets out of the vehicle. And you're never supposed to get out of a vehicle. First of all, everybody knows you don't get out of the vehicle. You put your hands at, at uh, 10 and 2 on the steering wheel so that the police know you have no weapon. That's what you do. You wait for the police officer to come up. He jumps out of the vehicle and goes, what are you stopping me for? And the police officer, officer says, get back in the vehicle. Because he, you know, he doesn't want to be rushed by this guy or have anything go wrong. The guy doesn't get back in. And he's, and he's, why are you stopping me? And he goes, well, apparently the, the license plate or something didn't match the car. You know, so there's a couple of possibilities. Somebody just didn't get to the, you know, they just used one of their other license plates and put it on the back of their car so they could drive it around until they got their new plates. Or it's a stolen vehicle. So he has every right to stop the car. And people are going, you shouldn't have stopped him. Yeah, he should have. Because we're supposed to stop people from stealing stuff. So he asks the guy, do you have a license? And the guy won't answer. He's like, do you have a driver's license? And the guy finally says, it's in the car. And, and the police officer right now is taking a lot of chances because he could reach in the car and pull a weapon out, which is exactly what is, you know, why you don't want the guy out of the car like that or reaching in the car. But he doesn't do it. He runs. So the police officer runs, you know, go, chases him. Now, then people go, oh, he shouldn't have been chased. Well, when somebody you was know, doing something like it, uh, it's showing some sign of guilt over something and he's running, so he chases him. And he gets to him and he says, he grabs the guy and the guy's struggling and he says, stop struggling, stop struggling, over and over and over. So they're rolling all over the place. The guy will not stop struggling. He won't and he won't and he won't. So now the guy's, the, the police officer has a taser out because he's like, you know, he's going, he's trying to tase the guy. And he, and the police officer says, don't re, don't reach for the taser. Don't grab the, don't get the taser. Don't grab for the taser. Now I will tell you, this is what people do not understand. If a person you are trying to arrest grabs your taser, you cannot just ignore that. This is why he got the guy got shot, because once that criminal, which he is now because he was resisting arrest and God knows what else, once he's got that taser in his hand, he can incapacitate the police officer, then grab the police officer's weapon and kill the police officer. So he cannot allow the guy to get his taser, and if the guy grabs his taser, it's every right to shoot him. That's called self-defense, and you know you, you can make all the stories one wants about this guy. But this guy did everything wrong, every single thing wrong. And he knew all those things were wrong that he was doing that got him killed. Uh, I do hope the guy gets, you know, does not get charged with homicide. Uh, uh, well, he'll get, he get charged with a justifiable homicide. I do not, I do hope that this police officer doesn't go down for a murder because this has become again, political and people, you know, uh, sort of a anti-police thing going on. But I watched that video and I'm like, <laughs> the guy couldn't have done more wrong things. He needed, he needed to watch that Chris Rock video, you know, <laughs> that the great video Chris Rock did ages ago about how not to get beat by the police. Um, but, you know, uh, but this guy did everything wrong. That Every single thing he did was a threat. Um, and and you, can't grab, you can't go after somebody's taser or you're going to get shot. And that's a, that's a shame. So anyway, oh, no, I didn't talk about this one. Um, uh, 
The mom and twins found dead in the car. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Let me, let me go to this one first. And I'll come back to that. Pat, I agree with that, but in Atlanta, a, co a cop was charged with murder after shooting a man who grabbed his taser. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's insane because you, that, you know, once they've got that, I mean, if they incapacitate you, you, you know, they, they're going to grab your weapon next. And, you know, people say, well, we don't know he's going to grab the weapon and kill you. You can't take that chance. You, you know, you, that, that's ridiculous. The person, if they're going to grab your taser and incapacitate you or threaten to incapacitate you, there you are at the point where you have to say to yourself, if I don't stop him, I will be dead, maybe dead in the next three seconds. And that gives you the right to self-defense. So, um, so, oh, because let me tell the, the lady, just this, uh, so the lady in the car, um, this was just a weird case that, and they don't, they don't know the answer to this yet, but it's like, there's a woman named Andrea Longhorst and there she is with her. She's got the, she's got these, these are twin, twin kids. She was found dead in her car with the kids are found dead with her and they're trying to figure out what caused the death. They're trying to determine if it's foul play. And they also say it's unclear if the three died at the same time or if she passed away before her children. So anyway, they found this car. It says here now, this is what gets interesting. Investigators have publicly stated that Langhorst was living out of her vehicle at the time with the two kids. That's concerning. So then this, uh, the father says he hadn't, the father of the woman said he hadn't spoken to her since March 11th. We were looking for her and hadn't heard anything from her. That was unusual for her. We wouldn't have daily contact, but this was a while. She was a free spirit, smart as a whip, beautiful, but lived her life to the beat of her own drummer. Well, fortunately, the beat of her own drummer was called drugs. Yeah, that's the problem. So apparently um, she, she has a problem with oxycodone. Um, she was found in the bathroom once with a syringe and a burnt spoon. Um, she has been arrested for drugs. So now the question is, did drug, drug use play a, a role in this? Um, and the other thing they're thinking about is, did they just stay in the car and then they get, you know, the fumes or got them or something? But, you know, I'm going to be curious to see what happened. Um, but then the, the father says, this is the father of the woman. Told, oh, oh, by the way, the, the father of the, the two children is in prison. So, yeah, she's got great taste. Um, he, the father said um, he never approved of his daughter's lifestyle, had even offered to take in his grandchildren. It was final. It was her decision. We didn't exactly approve of her lifestyle. I'm sorry. Drugs is not a lifestyle. Drugs is a crime. Having children around drugs is a crime. Um, you should have called social services. You should have done everything you can to get those children away from her as long as she's willing to use drugs around her children. Everything is hindsight, he says, but I'll be kicking my butt for the rest of my life. All I can think about are those babies. Well, you should have thought about those babies when your, your drug addict daughter put your the grandchildren in, in danger. And I know sometimes you can't, you can't, you can't fight. It's hard to fight through the system, but man, you know, it's not a lifestyle. Drugs is not a lifestyle. Drugs, in my opinion, drugs, there's no such thing. Drugs is not a victimless crime. Drugs has many, many victims. And that can be the person that took them and died because then their whole family and everybody else around them is affected by that. It can be the children who get a hold of the drugs and die. It can be that the parent can't take care of the children and allows terrible things to happen to their children because they, they're on drugs. Uh, it can be that they have to steal from other people because they're on drugs. So drugs is a as a crime of many, many victims. And I'm really harsh on drugs. And I, I, I don't like the fact that our, we've taken the war on drugs and made it a, a, a minor fist fight on drugs and think now we're just gonna expand everybody getting more and more legal drugs and handing out, you know, needles and, and some countries are handing out heroin, whatever, you know, whatever drugs they give you methadone. And I just find that appalling because drugs is a crime. It's an absolute crime. But anyway, that's my soapbox for tonight. <laughs> Always got one I got to do a soapbox on. But I hate drugs. I really, really hate that. Um, oh, thank you, Anne. Thanks. I feel better. Thank you. You know, you all made me feel better again. I, you know, it's you, it's a great distraction from when your head, like, half your head hurts. You know, so. But <laughs> um, but anyway, those I thought there were a whole bunch of really interesting cases I just ran into. And I'm like, wow, you know, um, really fascinating stuff. So I'm glad you were all here. Um, 
and I will be back on Sunday. I will be doing the Adam Walsh case. Who was responsible for what happened to Adam Walsh? Did they actually close the case? Or did uh, Adam's father, John Walsh, really, you know, really, um, uh, let's put it this way. John Walsh has a belief that that Tool is the guy who killed his son. Um, and I want to I want to review all of that to see whether there was a legitimate reason why he actually thought Tool was the one who killed his son and that the case is closed or whether could it have been Jeffrey Dahmer because he was also down there or could it have been someone else and the case should still be open. So I'm going to be doing a lot of reviewing of that and I'll be presenting that on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So um, um, so anyway, th oh, and, th and thank you, Lisa, very much. I I, I, I mean, it's nothing serious, you know. I'm just not. I'm not seriously sick. <laughs> just had this weird headache that just got to me today, and so I'm just gonna go. And now I'm gonna go rest in my little bed, and I'm gonna watch Hawaii Five-0, which is now my new favorite show. I'm, this is the old, old Hawaii Five-0, and I think it's really well done. So I enjoy watching it because, and I don't watch many crime shows, but I actually love that show. Darn. Um, and the answer to that, yes, I have met John Walsh. Um, I have done America's Most Wanted. Yes, I have met him. <laughs> uh, I think he had a really excellent show. I was not overly comfortable around him, but still had a really good show. Yeah, you know? <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> um, but, you know, he lost his son, and uh, the question is, you know, is it a closed case? And there's a controversy over it. So otherwise I wouldn't do the show. There is a controversy over it. And I was there, uh, the, the book Bringing Adam Home. Uh, I was there at the book signing. John Walsh was there. I was there uh, and I found it very interesting. I don't remember where it was or why I was there. I can't, I have no memory of the, I remember being at the event, but I have no idea why I was there. Um, and then I was also contacted by the author that wrote the book on Dahmer being the killer of Adam Walsh. And I had many discussions with him many years ago. So now I'm just going to be reviewing both of those books and the evidence, and that's what I'll present on Sunday. <laughs> we need the dirt pat. Now, it was just, you know, you know, um, it's not Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, I have no, I, you know, I, I'll say that guy's a sleaze. Uh, John Walsh, I just found him kind of, um, I don't know. Just distant, kind of, you know, not warm and chummy. Let me put it that way. Maybe it's just been a bad day. I, I know I did a show a couple times. I can't, I can't really remember. They all kind of blur into each other. But, uh, you know, um, I, I, but an excellent show it was. And it's done a lot of good. And so there you go. I like that. <laughs> um, so Benny's saying, O'Toole. Uh, Otis Tool did not kill Walsh. Ooh, that's Benny's opinion on this one. Yeah. Uh, Martin says, great theme tune. Yes, it is, isn't it? The old one. The new Hawaii Five O sucks eggs. It really is a terrible show. Oh, my God. Um, yes, it's set in Hawaii, and I'm a, I'm a Hawaii lover. And so the, the original Hawaii Five O really captures the flavor of the island. It really does. I mean, it's it's very muted in the in the colors because it's shot so long ago. It isn't. You don't get to see the beauty of Hawaii. But they have a lot of the culture there and a lot of the words they use. And, and so I recognize it because I've been to Hawaii many times. And um, so I, I really like it. Uh, and the new Hawaii 5.0 five, uh, is just garbage, just absolute garbage. Uh, it's a real shame. Oh, Dr. Phil is a slimy, unethical, nasty, horrible human being. <laughs> just my opinion. My opinion, I did one show with him and I would never ever do another show with that man because of his behavior on the show, toward the guests, the things he said to them, the nastiness that came out of his mouth and the fact he stole my stuff and then cut me out of the show and used my stuff. So I have no love of that guy. I think he's a, I think he's a con artist um, and uh, him and Dr. Oz, another one, another one, Dr. Oz and Dr. Phil. So anyway. <laughs> Don't love either one of them. I had bad experiences with both of them. So, um, and there's other people I've done shows with them. Always had a very, you know, a very decent time with them, and that's why I've been willing to go back on the shows because I was treated well. Um, 
Oh. <laughs> Would you rather get stuck in an elevator with Dr. Phil or Amber Heard? Well, let's see here. Hmm. You know, I might take Amber on that one. <laughs> I, I really despise Dr. Phil. I mean, I just, I, I can't say anything nice about him because I just don't think he's a decent human being. I don't. Um, and uh, Amber Heard, <laughs> well, I can slap her around. No, <laughs> I'm not promote, promoting violence on my show and I'm not threatening Amber Heard. <laughs> but she's smaller. <laughs> you know. So, at any rate, oh my God. So anyway, I will see, hopefully see you guys on on. Sunday and uh, hopefully I'll, ha I'll have a headache then but uh, uh, we'll see what we'll see what I come up with so Benny you have to wait and see whether I, th I agree with you or I don't agree with you so <laughs> anyway um, see you all then <laughs>